military might and public safety are under threat from an unseen enemy. Superfast vessels, stealthy submarines, commercial and research ships. When things move through water at high speeds, the physics creates some surprising effects. Take this propeller, for example. It's been badly damaged, not by running into anything, but the metal itself has been eaten away by the violent explosion of tiny bubbles. The unseen enemy is called cavitation. It has machinery under constant attack. If this propeller was so weakened, it couldn't drive a submarine, and this damaged pump couldn't keep a nuclear power station cool, the consequences of equipment failure are disastrous. This is one of the reasons why we study cavitation, to try and improve the performance of equipment like this in the future. The mysteries of fluid dynamics are seen not just in objects moving through water, but also in structures trying to contain it. Cavitation nearly shook this dam to pieces in 1983. High-speed flows of flood water from the Colorado River shredded the dam wall. Pieces of concrete and rock were hurled from the spillway. Cavitation had initiated a series of large holes about 8 to 10 feet deep and 25 feet wide, a huge underwater hole of unknown depth. Here's how cavitation works. As water flows around objects at high speeds, it creates areas of low pressure. This causes bubbles of vapour to erupt from the water as if it was boiling and grow explosively into vapour cavities. It all happens in the blink of an eye as the tiny bubbles implode with forces large enough to tear off bits of metal or concrete. Bring the pressure down to 10 kilopascals. To improve industrial design, cavitation is tested by controlling speed, pressure, even tiny air bubbles, and that takes special equipment. Inside this unassuming three-storey shed at the Australian Maritime College is a giant tunnel holding 365 tonnes of water. It's Paul Brander's pride and joy. It's analogous to a wind tunnel, but only here the working fluid is water rather than air. So just as you might test aircraft or aeronautical applications in a wind tunnel, we test maritime or hydrodynamic applications in a water tunnel. It's a big swimming pool that's a loop. It's a donut swimming pool, if you like, with a small test section in the middle of it. 30. This massive cavitation tunnel comes down to this. This is the business end. Right now, there's a swimming pool's worth of water rushing past me at 10 metres a second. By changing the speed of that flow and by varying the pressure anywhere between a near vacuum to four times atmospheric pressure, they can study exactly the kind of cavitation they want. This sphere is used to demonstrate the basic principles. What's that crackle coming out the back? That. That's Cavitation just beginning to start. That's a ring of cavitation. It's right just starting. Here. Yeah. So at that point, the pressure has locally reached vapor pressure. So that water's boiling. In a sense, it's it's changing from its liquid phase to a vapor phase. But in this case, unlike boiling, the, the driving mechanism is, is, is pressure reduction Instead rather of pressure. than heat addition. Yeah, right. This must have a huge effect on ship's performance. Cavitation's a very loud, violent, noisy. I can feel and, the vibrations coming can, through the chamber. It can even it can, it can erode metal. So ultimately can lead to destruction of machinery. This knowledge is essential for designing vessels that need speed and silence to evade detection. Brendan Anderson works with Paul to test ships and submarines for the military. Bubbles are formed, they collapse, they create noise and the, the most likely area that that occurs is, is around the propeller. The scale models going into the tunnel, like this propeller, are wired up with sensors to measure the forces acting on them. The 
if, for instance, we buy a design and we don't fully understand all the features of that design, we might look at, you know, when does cavitation begin and, and that will sort of indicate to us, you know, at what speeds we might become noisy. We can not only see cavitation vortices from the tips of the propeller blades, but we can hear the bubbles sing as they resonate and radiate sound. But how to avoid the vibration and noise? Back to the sphere, where Paul takes cavitation to the next level. We're keeping the uh, flow rate the same, but reducing the pressure. And as you can see, as the cavity grows longer, it starts to quieten, and that, that closure, the violent, turbulent region, moves downstream. We call this supercavitation. Supercavitation creates a vapour cavity large enough to completely surround the sphere. To see where all the turbulence has gone, adjust the light. So on the outside it looks kind of smooth and calm. But on the inside it's all still occurring. That's incredible! This is what's called a re-entrant jet. It's this wave or jet of water flowing forward. And as it flows forward it falls to the bottom of the cavity and is carried aft so we get this rotating flow. So there's a inside cavity inside the, in the vapour vapor cavity. Inside the vapour cavity and you've got a wave rolling forward in the opposite direction to the water flow. Yeah, it's one of the boundary conditions. So is this a way to beat the effects of cavitation? You design something to create cavitation to beat cavitation? It's a way to manage it. As remarkable as it seems, that, uh, that needs to occur to form a stable cavity. It's all about using the principles of supercavitation to achieve stability. And that's particularly useful when designing fast ships. The giant hydrofoils on this US Navy vessel are scaled down to this size for testing in the tunnel. High-speed cameras reveal when cavitation starts to cause damaging turbulence. This cavity is unsteady. A jet of water is coming through from behind, breaking the cavity off. A part of the cavity is swept away, and then the cavity grows anew. But change the conditions, and supercavitation kicks in. The hydrofoil is streamlined by a bubble of vapour, separating it from the turbulence that causes drag. So with less turbulence, ships can travel faster and submarines can be quieter, without cavitation tearing their hulls apart. And without the tunnel, the wonder and beauty of cavitation would be impossible to see.